Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham joins us right now in an exclusive. Good to see you, Senator. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you. Your reaction to what Nancy Pelosi is doing. Have you heard from Nancy Pelosi? Are you getting the articles of impeachment in the Senate? <laughs> Well, my reaction is that uh, she's taking a wrecking ball to the Constitution. This is the latest in a series of constitutional train wrecks orchestrated by Nancy Pelosi. During the impeachment process, the president was not allowed to have counsel present during the intel committee. He could not call witnesses on his behalf. He could not confront his accuser. And now that he's been charged with two articles of impeachment, Nancy Pelosi is denying the president his day in the court in the Senate, and she's actually trying to tell Mitch McConnell how to run the Senate. Uh, she's trampling on the separation of powers. It's the Senate's job to dispose of impeachment articles once passed by the House. It's not Nancy Pelosi's job. When it comes to Trump, the rules don't matter to Democrats, and that's dangerous and sad. I mean, how is this going to play out? We spoke yesterday. You said this was like extortion. Explain that. It is. Well, what she's trying to do is to get Mitch McConnell to bend to her will to shape the trial. Can you imagine if the roles were reversed? You had a uh, Democratic president impeached by a Republican House, and the Republican speaker was telling a Democratic majority leader how to run the trial. You know, the media is so in the tank when it comes to Trump. Democrats hate him so much, they don't love anything. Uh, constitutional anymore. All the rules have been thrown in a ditch to get Trump from the way they impeached him to now denying his day in court. Here's how it's going to end. She'll eventually send the articles because public opinion will crush the Democrats. You got the minority leader, Chuck Schumer, conspiring with the uh, Speaker of the House, basically, to insist upon calling witnesses that deny. The president is invoking executive privilege around Mulvaney, and John Bolton and others. They impeached this president because he chose to go to the court. Second article of impeachment is obstruction of uh, Congress. The president has claimed executive privilege. And st instead of allowing the president to exercise his legal rights, they've impeached him because he wanted to go to court. Can you imagine what would have happened if we'd done this to a Democrat, that we impeach a Democrat because they wanted to go to court? Yeah, it, it's pretty extraordinary. Uh, so, so do you expect that there will be witnesses in a Senate trial? Can you walk us through how uh, the Senate trial? No, will I don't. Let yeah. me. Okay, to any senator who votes to compel the testimony of John Bolton or Mick Mulvaney before the president can have his day in court exercising executive privilege before the courts, the courts available to every American, including Donald Trump. So if you call these witnesses who work for the president after he's invoked executive privilege, if you deny him his day in court, then you're abusing the constitutional rights of Donald Trump as president and you're putting the entire presidency at risk. I can't imagine any senator doing this to the presidency. Yeah. What, what did they impeach him for? Maria, they impeached him because he wanted to go to court. Instead of allowing the president to go to court to exercise executive privilege, they put an artificial time limit and said, if you don't allow these witnesses to come to the House at a time certain, we're going to impeach you. They impeached him for, for exercising his legal rights. I hope senators will not do the same thing. Hope the senators will not vote to compel witnesses before the court determines whether or not there's executive privilege. All right. I, I want to move on to Pfizer, but real quick, how long would you expect a Senate trial to go? When you go back to Clinton, what was it, two weeks? Yeah, I, I think what's going to happen is going to be exactly like the Clinton trial. The House managers will argue the case to the Senate based on the record established at the House. And one of the reasons she's not sending these impeachment articles over is because her case is so weak and shaky. But what happened in Clinton, they argued the facts accumulated by the House. Witnesses were requested. They were denied along party lines. Yeah. There were no witnesses. Then we voted. That's what's going to happen here. And you were a House manager back then. Yeah, so I made the case based on what we did in the House. Then we requested witnesses. The Senate refused to allow witnesses. Then they voted on the articles of impeachment. Schumer says he wants a process like Clinton. That's exactly what he wants to get. But when it comes to Senator Schumer and his colleagues, they could care less if they're trampling on the rights of Donald Trump. This president is wanting to invoke executive privilege. 
The question, will the Senate deny President Trump the ability to invoke executive privilege, or will they run over his right to exo uh, invoke executive privilege and force the witnesses to come anyway? Yeah. The House just impeached him because he wanted to go to court. This is the first time a president's ever impeached because he insisted, to going, insisted on going to court. This is dangerous. Senator, do you know who the House managers are this time around? No, I'm sure it will be the, you know, Schiff Nadler show. Okay. You know, I, yeah. I supported Mueller's investigation because I took it seriously. Yeah. This stuff from the beginning has been partisan. I, I'm glad you mentioned Mueller because I have an op-ed here from the journal this weekend, and it's called Robert Mueller's Dossier Dodge. And, you know, it, it's asking the question, uh, <laughs> yeah. the same question that I asked throughout the Mueller trial. Uh, I'm sorry, the Mueller hearing. And it was basically, how is it even possible that Robert Mueller can sit there and, and testify to what took place in 2016 in terms of Russian <clears throat> meddling without looking at the dossier? But over and over again, he said that the dossier was not in his purview, that it wasn't his man. Mandate. Now we know from the IG report that, in fact, the dossier was a, quote, essential part of the wiretap warrant that they got, the warrant to wiretap an innocent American citizen, and that is Carter Page. What is your reaction to that, that Mueller refused to talk about the dossier, even though now we know it was essential for them getting that wiretap? He was the former FBI director. He spent $40-plus million on this Mueller probe. Shouldn't he have known that? Yeah, I don't see how you can <clears throat> can investigate the 2016 Trump Russian allegations without looking at the dossier. I don't know how you can move forward once the dossier collapsed regarding Carter Page. So the Horowitz report is the first step in a long journey recording regarding FISA abuse. <clears throat> the FISA court rebuked the FBI. That is a great start. They came down hard on the FBI. If they had failed to do that, I would have lost all confidence in the court. Comey said last week he was sorry. It was sloppy. No, Comey, it wasn't sloppy. It was criminal. I'm going to call every person who signed the warrant application. I'm going to find out why Brennan went to Harry Reid in September of 2016 to talk about the investigation. I'm going to find out why it took two years for Mueller to realize there was no there there. We're going to look long and hard at FISA abuse. We're going to pass laws to make sure this never happens again. Accountability will only be successful if somebody gets fired, and I'm looking at Christopher Wray uh, to fire somebody at the FBI, and somebody needs to go to jail, and I'm looking at Durham to hold people criminally accountable for the laws they broke. Well, you make a good point. And we've got a graphic here that shows everybody who signed those warrants. And you're saying each of these people you're going to call down to testify. That includes, obviously, James Comey signed the warrant three times. Sally Yates signed it once. Yeah. You had Andrew McCabe, uh, yeah. his deputy, signing it. Um, yeah. Do we have that graphic? Sally Yates as well. All of those people you say you are going to call to testify as you continue to do this deep dive yeah. into what took place in 2016. Yeah, there's two questions I want to, to ask these people. When you signed the warrant application, how much time did you spend trying to figure out if it was actually true? And how far up the chain did this go? Did President Obama know about the counterintelligence surveillance of the Trump campaign? Did Vice President Biden know? How much information was provided to Susan Rice? I want to know how, up, how far up the chain the investigation went. I want to know why so many people could sign a warrant application so flawed. So there's a lot of questions. I want to make sure this never happens again. To the American people, you deserve better than this. Every American should be worried about FISA. And to this impeachment debacle, to my Democratic colleagues, yeah. I impeachment wanna... is a dead cat. I wanna, Stop I wanna... playing with it. <laughs> Say it again, Senator. Impeachment is a dead cat. Stop playing with it. Bury it. It's going nowhere. Quit violating the Constitution. Give President his day in court. And let's get this behind us so we talk about things that people really care about in this country. Senator, I want to take a short break, but what you just said was really important. How high up the chain does it go? 
a lot of people keep telling me that the mastermind was at the CIA of, of uh, putting Trump into this whole Russia meddling hoax over the last three years. I want to talk about John Brennan when we come right back. Stay with the Senator. Senator, a moment ago, we were uh, talking about the FISA abuse and this whole idea to insert Donald Trump's name into Russia meddling back in 2016. You said how high up the chain does it go. I want to take your attention to you back of May of 2017 when Trey Gowdy was questioning the, uh, former CIA director John Brennan. Listen to what he said. Watch. Do you know if the Bureau ever relied on the Steele dossier as, any, as part of any court filings, applications, petitions, pleadings? I have no awareness. Did the CIA rely on it? No. Why not? Because we, we didn't. We, it wasn't part of the corpus of intelligence uh, information that we had. Senator, you just heard it. That was May of 17. He said it wasn't part of the <laughs> corpus of information we had. In fact, we know now from Michael Horowitz's IG report, which came out last week, that it was an essential, quote unquote, essential part of the application for a wiretap on Carter Page. Your reaction? Well, number one, uh, it was a part of the intelligence assessment provided to President Trump in January of 2017. This is when Comey met privately with the president, said, I want you to know about this dossier. We can't verify it, but I want you to know about it. About it. I want to know, was the CIA part of an effort to get to the media the fact that Trump was under investigation? There was a lot of frustration by people at the FBI and other places that the storyline was not getting out. Christopher Steele went to every media outlet in the country to shop the dossier to try, try to get it out before the election. Brennan meets privately, I think, in September with Harry Reid, John Brennan, the CIA director. I want to know what role, if any, did the FBI and the CIA play in trying to get out the dossier, market the story that Trump was under investigation for colluding with the Russians? It looks like John Durham wants to know the same thing. John Durham has now requested, we understand, from the New York Times uh, that John Durham has asked for John Brennan's phone records and emails, and they want to know what exactly he was telling CIA staff in terms of this dossier. Was that perjury there? Did he just commit perjury in that May hearing? Uh, we'll let John D Durham, uh, Durham decide that, but it's pretty odd to me for the CIA director to tell publicly under oath the public that the dossier had no part in the corpus of the intelligence being gathered when it was the central reason they got the FISA warrant against Carter Page. There's a disconnect there. Somebody's either really ignorant of what happened or they're trying to shade what happened. I think they never believed that they would be a Horowitz investigation. I think these people believed they would get away with it and along comes Horowitz. What Horowitz told the American people is very damning. He told a story of manipulating evidence to continue to get a warrant against an American citizen. He told a story of mm. hiding exculpatory information from the court to keep the investigation going. Why did they want to keep it going when it should have stopped? Because they hated Trump and they were out to get him. There's no other co con conclusion. Now, I want, to, I want to know how far up did this go? I want to know, did President Obama was he aware of the counterintelligence investigation of the Trump campaign? And I'd be shocked if he was not. Yeah. And, and real quick, are you going to get back to looking at what you were talking about as priorities? And that was you wanted to know everything about the Bidens. You say that we're not going to see witnesses, likely not, in this upcoming impeachment right. trial. If you get through this quickly, it, what's your, what is your next priority, aside from, obviously, the FISA abuse? I'm working with... Thank you. Here's the question. You know, the Washington Post, the New York Times, and major media outlets in this country, uh, all the news organizations, haven't spent 15 minutes or $15 looking at whether or not Hunter Biden, who received $50,000 a month from one of the most corrupt companies in the Ukraine, tried to stop the investigation once it was opened. Working with Senator Johnson and Grassley, I'm going to ask questions about the role Hunter Biden played after Burisma w became under investigation, after they raided the president of Burisma's home. He picks up the phone, he calls the State Department. If this had been Mike Pence's son, it'd be the most 
damning story in the history of America. They'd be challenging whether Mike Pence should even have Christmas Day with his son. So the double standard here is unbelievable. We will continue to look at the Hunter Biden uh, conflict of interest, whether or not he did anything inappropriate, what did Joe Biden do and when did he do it, because the American media will not. But we're not going to do it during impeachment. As I said before, impeachment uh, is a dead cat. It needs to be buried. And what they're doing to President Trump by denying him his day in court in the Senate is unconscionable. Yep. They're shredding the Constitution. I know you don't like Trump, but enough is enough. And I know that there's also an issue around China with Hunter Biden. He traveled on Air Force Two with his, his then, no, his father, then Vice President Joe Biden to China and then received yeah. money yep. later. You know, I, I've known Seven. Joe Biden for a long time. I admire him. I like him. He's had a tragic life. But I, we're not going to let this go. Okay. Did, did Hunter Biden monetize the vice presidency? I don't know. Somebody needs to look. I can assure you if a Republican did this, they would be looking at us. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much.